Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are. We are live at the Nansen Awards in Geneva. My name is Anita Rani. I am going to be your host for the next hour or so. What you can see in front of you is the stage. In fact, have another look. All around you are dignitaries, ambassadors, important people from all over the world that have gathered here tonight. The stage is set. Anushka Shankar will be performing. Come with me, come. Let me take you backstage. So all those people are there to watch the Nansen Awards, which are taking place in just a moment. But you, lucky bunch, are with me, which means you get access to all areas. This is backstage. Here we go. So lots of men with screens and buttons. Oh, you're not going to believe this. I'll be talking to lots of people, including this beautiful woman who's about to go on stage. It's Anushka Shankar, yes, I will be talking to Anushka. Anushka is performing on that stage in just a moment, as well as Anushka Shankar, Kate Blanchett, Hollywood A-list Kate Blanchett with those amazing cheekbones, is uh, the keynote speaker. She's a UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador, and I caught up with her a little bit earlier, so you'll be able to see that um, uh, interview. If you're in Norway, hello to all the Norwegians. Sigrid is performing today. She's also going to be on that stage and coming to join me in my studio. Before you go into my studio, I'm going to show you behind the scenes because we can do this. Jeff, Jeff's my cameraman. Have a look in there. Hello, gang. They're the people running the show. We've got to be very nice to them because they can cut us off at any time. Come into the studio. Oh, this is us. Right, let's get comfortable. I'm going to put my microphone down. Hello, everybody. Let's start again, shall we? That was all a bit of excitement, wasn't it? My name is Anita Rani. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to the Nansen Awards. We are live on Facebook. The Nansen Awards, for those of you who have no idea what they are, they are named after a really important Norwegian polar explorer called Fridtjof Nansen. He's a hero in Norway. I can hear all the Norwegians now saying, we know who Nansen is. After he finished uh, exploring the Arctic, he became the first High Commissioner for Refugees. And he was responsible after, after the First World War for repatriating nearly half a million prisoners of war. So this award ceremony is to honor somebody on the planet who is doing remarkable humanitarian work with displaced people. There are 68 and a half million displaced people on earth right now. Think about it. Hello to everyone who's just switching on, by the way. 68 and a half million displaced people. It is a humanitarian crisis. Uh, I personally think it's one of the biggest issues we have to deal with as a planet. There are lots of issues and this is a really important one, one of the main ones. So that is why you're here joining us today. We are celebrating humanity and honoring one person who really lives in the, uh, the ethos and the beliefs and what, what Nansen was about. This year, we are going to South Sudan because we are honoring Dr. Evan Attar. Now, he's the head surgeon and medical director of Maban Hospital in Bunj in South Sudan. If you are in South Sudan, get in touch. Let us know if you know Dr. Attar or if you're there, we'd love to hear from you. Now, the only functional hospital in the Upper Nile State is where he works as a surgeon. The Upper Nile State, the hospital that he services, really let this sink in. The area is the size of Switzerland, and he is the surgeon running that hospital. Now, a couple of hours ago, I caught up with this truly remarkable human being who is this year's winner of the UNHCR's Nansen Award. Take a look. Dr. Atta, congratulations. I'm with the main man, the man of the moment. What does it mean to win the Nansen Award? Really, I'm really humbled by this nonsense award and uh, we have all our hopes and all this will obviously come through what we want to do in that hospital. I'd like to know, because you do such remarkable work, you help hundreds of thousands of people, you're a small clinic, what keeps you going? You work sometimes two days straight, you don't see your family for months and months and months. What keeps you going? Uh, what really keeps me going is uh, the suffering of the people. When I went there, I found actually these were people who really have nowhere to go. They don't have anywhere to go. And um, it really touched me that if I have something very little in my hands, I can help them. It will change their life. And what are you going to do with the money? It's a lot of money. How useful will that money be? Uh, we have been really talking over the, the, the 
challenges that we have, we would like actually to put an end to those challenges and it will give us actually a strong uh, position where we can continue to help and save lives. Um, I want to congratulate you once again. Have a wonderful evening. Are you looking forward to going on that stage and being in front of all those dignitaries? That is sincerely true, yes. Um, <laughs> now looking forward to the good of this stage. It's, it's your night. Have Thank a great you. night. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you so much. It. Thank you. Thank you. What a guy! It is his night, you see? So that is what we're celebrating tonight. We are focusing uh, the world's attention. All of you have joined us. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is uh, the Nansen Awards. We're live in Geneva. That is the man who has won the Nansen Award this year, as well as the $150,000 he is taking home. He's also, he's also taking this. This is the award that he gets, and $150,000. Now imagine how far that would go in a, in a tiny clinic in South Sudan where he works. So if you're joining us, we want to hear from you because this is the magic of Facebook Live, everybody. This is the magic of Facebook. We want to hear from you. Send us your comments. Tell us what you would like to say. What do you think about Dr. Attar and the incredible work he's doing? We've got amazing artists coming up through the hour. Anushka Shankar is about to take to the stage. We've got Kate Blanchett coming up. We've got Sigri. Uh, um, Namzamo from uh, South Africa is hosting on the stage and we would like to hear from you. You can tell us what you think. In fact, look, see this? This is modern technology. I have an iPad. And someone here has said, Sharon, that says this is, that's a heart full of empathy, really touching. You're absolutely right. Uh, Irini says, keep going with the good work. We've got people tuning in from Malaysia, USA, hello, Cyprus, Hello to you. Uh, Indonesia, good evening. It must be in, what time is it in Indonesia? Actually, and for those of you who are in Indonesia, our hearts are with you. Um, we're thinking about all of you, particularly those families who are suffering after the tsunami. So you are, you are in our hearts and you're in our minds, everybody in Indonesia. Uh, Nepal, hello. South Sudan, hello to everybody in South Sudan. You must be incredibly proud of Dr. Attar, who has received this year's Nansen Award. Now, let me tell you why I'm here. My name's Anita Rani, by the way. For those of you who don't watch uh, programs on UK television or maybe haven't seen my documentaries on BBC World, uh, my name is Anita Rani. I'm a bit broadcaster, TV presenter. And uh, a few years ago, in 2016, I made a two-part documentary for the BBC all about Zatari. Now, Zatari is a refugee camp in Jordan. It's the third largest city in um, in Jordan, it, eighty thousand people, eighty thousand people live there. Now, these uh, refugees had been there for five years when I went, and it was a life-changing experience for me for many reasons. Now, I got there, and refugee camps. Uh, try and imagine what it must be like in a refugee camp. It can't be the easiest of places. Everybody living there, nobody wants to be there. No one is there out of choice. They're there because something is happening in their own country that has made them stateless and homeless. Thankfully, Jordan's heart is big enough to take in Syrian refugees. I went to visit and what struck me was, apart from the fact that there are children there who will be born stateless, girls who won't be able to have an education, there are also humans that are surviving and thriving in that environment and that is what we're here to celebrate humanity it delights me to be able to say that anushka shankar is performing here in fact let's go live to the stage where we can hear her performance right now
Wasn't that incredible? Welcome, welcome, welcome if you're just joining us. We are live in Geneva for the Nansen Awards where uh, tonight Dr. Evan Atta from South Sudan will be honoured with the Nansen Award. You just saw Anushka Shankar there, composer, Indian classical, progressive musician. She's going to be making her way straight from the stage to the studio. On, but before she gets here, I'd like to show you some footage of five things you need to know about South Sudan. It's the biggest refugee refugee emergency in Africa, the world's youngest country. There's a crisis there, and this video explains everything you need to know. Facebook Anushka. Can you believe everybody? Uh, Anushka Shankar, who we just, I mean, look, the, the comments are coming in. By the way, please keep your comments coming in. What Anushka, are people are saying beautiful so music. Well done, Anushka. Glad to be able to listen to you again after your unique concert in Mauritius. Cool. Thank Aww. you for rushing backstage to join me. How does it feel? How does that feel? What's this feeling that you've got? I feel there? really pleased. Um, it just feels really, um, it feels special to be able to play this music at, at the Nansen Awards because obviously uh, this whole album was written in response to the refugee crisis and I've been touring it for a good two and a half years now around the world. And so when we get to do something like this where it feels like we're connecting to something a bit bigger that's really recognizing someone incredible like today who's working really within the field is it's really special. That's quite a remarkable thing that you've done. You've created a piece of art around the refugee crisis. Why did you do that? It just came from my belly. I don't know, um, it wasn't a conscious decision. I'd had my second child. I was sat on a sofa breastfeeding and I turned on the news. And that was that, you know, it was the summer of 2015 and just it was just kind of mothers just like me, you know, with babies just like mine. And, and, and there was no kind of conscious thought process around that. It was just this kind of sense of the injustice of that, that I could be sat on a sofa watching the news um, and that there were millions of people trying to just have some semblance of that kind of normality for themselves, you know. Yes. And, and do you think people are connected to it? Do people come to talk to you about it? Yeah, I mean, that has happened. It, it is interesting with stuff like art. Um, it, we don't always feel like there's a, a measurable impact that we can have with art, but, but occasionally we do get to hear back from people that, um, that they've had an emotional or an empathetic response to something mm. that occasionally perhaps a more intellectual dialogue may not have reached for, for some people. Um, and so, so we do kind of get that sense that occasionally we've reached people through a, a a place that maybe debate couldn't have or a news story couldn't have. And then if that does go on and create some kind of further impact, then that's incredible. But that's out of my control. The only mm -hmm. thing I can do is just play the music and do, do my part. And we are so grateful, eternally grateful, from the bottom of our hearts. Facebook, I'm speaking on behalf of all of you watching, <laughs> for the music. You are gifted. Like When I hear you play, it just... It, I don't... It's, it's like it's, it's making vibrations in me happen. It's beautiful. You connected to the crisis because you were, you know, you had your child in your arms, and you're a human being with a beating heart. But also, you're a global citizen, Anushka. That's how I see, you know, Indian heritage. You've lived all over the world. Do you think that gives you another perspective on what it means to what what home means, or for refugees and displaced people, the lack of? Um, I wouldn't say it gives me uh, a greater insight into, you know, what what a, a refugee life story would be in any way, but it does give me an insight into the opposite, you know, that, that by virtue of the kind of passport I have and the, the upbringing I've had, I have the fortune of being able to make choices about where I want to leave, live and where I want to work. And, and then that's the kind of thing that we can so easily take for granted, um, except for so many million, millions of people, that isn't the case. And so I do feel like that's something to be grateful for and to, to be aware of in, in the choices I make. 
Um, now, I, you know this about me, because we, we are friends, by we're the friends. way. We're buddies. <laughs> oh. I, I borrowed my clothes from you. No, you look amazing. <laughs> I cannot tell you. Right, that is a proper... I, didn't, I can't believe you told everybody, because you, you should have just gone no, with it, no, owned I it. I showed up in a panic and said, do you have an Can you dress? imagine what I'm going through, right? I'm sitting here watching this incredible yeah. woman on stage. And like, she's wearing my dress. Yeah. And you look amazing in it. But you should have told everybody. But anyway, it's our it's a dress. And, and you know that my story is, not, well, we're North Indian, the partition of India, mm. and so many of us have migrant stories we are all like this story of moving around the country it's just about moving around the world um is is part of so many of our histories isn't Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. no absolutely i mean where where is someone from where do you draw the line in your history like where do you stop and say this is where i began you know who knows your beginning point really and and um you know (sighs) Yeah, we. I mean, it's the same. My parents are from two different parts of India, but um, but my father, of course, you know, there, there there was an effect of partition as well, and so, yeah, it's um, it is part of us all. I'm looking mm-hmm. at these Facebook comments that are coming through for you. Someone's saying, "Congratulations, keep the fantastic work up." Watching from Lebanon, mm-hmm. uh, thank you for beautiful music. Greta's saying, uh, another question: What inspired you to work with refugees? Um, just what, as why you, are you said. Here? If, um, because it feels important. I mean, this is the, the you know, one of the greatest crises of our times. Um, and, and I don't feel like I can shut my eyes or close my heart to that. Um, I'd be more worried if I could, really. I think you've said it beautifully. Please keep just connecting with your music. You know, your music is, you're a gifted, wonderful, beautiful human being, Anushka. I have, I love that you are here. I love that you're my friend. And thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you. Anushka is not the only remarkable woman who's involved in this event tonight. Kate Blanchett. Yes, the (laughs) cheekbones. Kate, I mean, yes. Uh, Kate Blanchett was made a UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador in 2016. She is here tonight to deliver the keynote speech. And earlier today, yours truly had a chance to ask her a few questions about her advocacy for refugees and her passion for storytelling. Take a look. Kate, it's lovely to see you. Um, You could add your time and your celebrity to any number of causes. Why have you chosen to be a good oil ambassador for UNHCR? I count myself incredibly privileged to be working with UNHCR. I mean, I look around me and it's the largest, um, one of the largest crises facing us as a species. It's an unprecedented amount of people are on the move, 68.5 million around the world, and many of them are refugees, and many of those refugees are children. Over half of the refugees around the world are children. So as a mother, as a, as a human being, you can't ignore that. And, um, and then being Australian, I come from a country that um, has largely been positively built on a welcoming stance to to immigrants and asylum seekers and refugees and I've just watched over the last 20 years that that welcoming sort of discourse and embrace towards the world's most vulnerable people has been replaced with a kind of a, a narrative of xenophobia and fear and I found that really bewildering so I suppose for me uh, being a goodwill ambassador for UNHCR, the, good, uh, the UN Refugee Agency, is an opportunity to try and change that discourse mm. to one of um, you know, empathy and understanding and finding the points of connection that we all have actually between refugees because when you're um, fleeing from your country, fleeing, fleeing persecution, you don't stop being a human being. And, and you went to Bangladesh earlier this year. You, yes. you went to bear yes. witness and hear some of those stories. As a storyteller, and I know you're very passionate particularly about the, the plights of women on the planet, as am I, mm. how important was it to go and, and look those refugees, those displaced people in the eye and hear their accounts of what they've been through? It was overwhelming, as you can imagine. I mean, at, at now in, um, in the Cox's Bazaar area, there's over 900,000, um, or upwards of 900,000 Rohingya refugees, some of whom have been there for many years, but hundreds of thousands of those people have fled in a very short space of time. And it was very chaotic. Um, and I was, I was also overwhelmed, not only by the scale of the need, um, which is still very much uh, real and present, but also by the, um, this, the the organisational power of UNHCR to help bring some sort of structure to that that chaos, and um, and I was also very very overwhelmed by the fact that the Bangladeshi government and the the host communities have been so welcoming to these people. What I saw was incredible generosity, and I found that very humbling. 
What's the power of creativity in all of this? Because I came to Parliament in the UK on World Refugee Day, and mm -hmm. it was yourself. You, so did I. Yeah, you were there, you were great, you performed, you were uh, the phenomenal JJ Bowler. Oh, I think wonderful, Isn't yeah. Isn't he incredible? David Morrissey, Colin mm. Firth. So what is the power of art? I think a story, whether it's told with images or spoken word or through music, however you receive it and however it's made, it's, it's all about finding those points of, of connection and building a road to, to empathy and, and, and understanding and humanising. Um, I suppose the stories of, of, of refugees and finding those points of connection. I mean, there's so many refugees. The refugee problem didn't just erupt overnight. You know, think about Sigmund Freud or Bob Marley or Madeleine Albright or Hannah Arendt. There's so many incredible refugees that have given so much back to yeah. the, the to, you know to the their place that they've eventually called home. And so when we start to put those you know those names and 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 tell those stories, like some some uh, some of the stories we read on that day were actually refugee uh, uh, first-person stories and I think when people hear those things um, uh, you know and hear about the the plight of women and, and girls it it's hopefully does get people to first base you know because the numbers are overwhelming but it's um we can make very small actions in our own lives that can actually you know have a significant impact I think and you touched on it earlier we are living in very dark and cynical times at we the are moment. Um, how important is it to have a night like tonight to have an the Nansen Award where we do celebrate humanity yes and hope I mean in the end you and I we lose hope on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. it's very difficult to go on you take the, the way of hope from a from a refugee and it's also very difficult for them to go on um, and so I think it's it's really important to we all want heroes don't we and tonight is about celebrating a selfless um, giving back often a great personal cost to help the um, to refugees like Dr. Attar you know who is with with next to nothing mm. with one lamp and often with you know a very small toolkit and I do say toolkit, he's been saving lives in South Sudan and I find that absolutely inspiring. And also in my own life to think, well, what can I do? You know, how can I challenge xenophobic thinking? How can I use my vote to mm. make sure that I'm represented in a way where, where xenophobic sort of lockdown policies and are not misrepresenting, the, you know, my, the country of, my country of birth, natural, um, national character. You know, there's things we can do. You're doing a huge amount. I don't know about you that. Really Dr. Are. Attar is. He is. The one um, and, and, and for a lot of people, you are also a hero. Mm. Uh, as I like to call you, a total badass. Kate, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. And let's cross live to the stage now where we can hear Kate give her keynote speech. Towards refugees, broken political systems, and the shifting tides of history, which will, in the course of just three generations, miraculously deem what was criminal suddenly noble, and vice versa. It's an Australian story. Australia, white Australia, has a history teeming with refused, denied and demeaned people. It has been built on the hopes of immigrants, many of them refugees, the despair of convicts and the denial of its original inhabitants. In short, Australia, when viewed through the prism of late Western capitalism, is a snapshot of the broken consequences of colonialism, religious extremism and prejudice. So, to the story. Years ago, a man was born whose parents had no hope or chance in their home country, and so they decided to ship themselves to Australia. He was born into a big family that only had each other to rely on. The social system around them was weighted entirely against them culturally. Their religious practices were spurned, their rights impinged upon regularly. They were always blamed for local disorder and for any unsolved petty criminal activity. Consequently, they were hounded by the powers that were at the time, hounded and harassed, derided in the press and denied access to education and most, most pathways to a good, honest life. Now, doesn't that sound like an awfully familiar pattern? Anyway, Unsurprisingly, they banded together, these young men. They pushed back at the system that showed them no respect. And more often than not, in that awful logic of self-fulfilling prophecies, they became vandals, then vagabonds, then horse thieves, bank robbers, and eventually, surprise, surprise, murderers. Now, when one of these lads was 11, he had saved a local boy from drowning in a river at great risk to himself. 
and the mayor awarded him a special sash for bravery. The 11-year-old boy grew up to become the leader of one of the most feared and revered, the most loathed and admired socially outcast band of thieves in white Australian history. No, it wasn't ACDC. It was the Kelly Gang. That boy was Ned Kelly, the outlaw. Now, Ned was an Irish Catholic at a time when the Church of England and the Protestants run Australia. He was poor and he had no chance of getting access to society. It was a walled society. It was a xenophobic society. It was a society that closed ranks and sat on its piles of gold greedily in its gleaming towers. And these days, he is seen as one of Australia's greatest heroes. A forward-thinking, albeit entirely self-educated and unsophisticated, agitator for social change. Now, he was tried and hung as a murderer and a thief, the only member of the Kelly gang left alive after a terrible siege with burning buildings and terrified civilian hostages. He had survived the siege in his trademark armour. And when they captured him, they found under that armour that that grown man was wearing the sash he had been awarded at 11 years of age. The sash that deemed his actions worthy of respect. The sash that said thank you. Now, we are back in times of crisis, a time of xenophobia and closed ranks and walls and endless religious and moral and economic justifications for massive wealth gaps and massive social disorder and massive cultural fragmentation, countless justifications, but no solutions. Now, the award tonight marks a great humanitarian achievement. It is a formalised way of saying thank you to one person specifically, but perhaps most importantly, it carries with it the inexpressible thanks to all who work in humanitarian fields, often at great personal cost. Across the globe, hope comes with these individuals who dedicate their lives to the service of refugees and the internally displaced. Hope is embodied in the field workers and in the volunteers like our Nansen Laureate tonight. People who bring refugees and host, communi host communities together. In these people, we have not just the ground force, but the beating heart and moral impulse to achieve change. The Nansen Refugee Award winners and finalists embody the dedication that shows us how we can transform brutal disruption into great human triumph. Now, as an artist, it's my job to explore the human condition through the telling of story. And I believe art should provoke us to question our values, both as individuals and as a society. So I'd like to finish with one more story. It's a work that many of you will know. Now, my son Iggy, is here with me tonight. He's looking askance because his mother's <laughs> mentioning his name. And do you remember reading The Silver Sword? Well, The Silver Sword is a story from yet another time of great disruption, a story from the Second World War, the consequences which led, of course, to the formation of our beloved UNHCR. And as Iggy and his father and I read this story together, I realized how profoundly relevant to the world today it still is. It's about the good in people. It's a call for open and compassionate concern for the plight of those less fortunate than ourselves. People tossed about like corks on a storm. Vulnerable people like that 11-year-old Ned Kelly. People who are served by great humanitarians like Dr. Attar. And so, it is people like Dr. Attar and Nansen Laureate tonight who personify that good and who inspire us, inspire us to build a better future for everyone. Thank you. Powerful stuff from a remarkable woman. I'm also joined by another remarkable young woman, Sigrid. Welcome. Welcome Thank to Facebook you. Live. Thanks a lot. Sigrid, the world's the world, Sigrid. Hello, world. <laughs> uh, you are. You could perform anywhere. You are so in, in such high demand. Why have you chosen to take time out to come and perform at the Nansen Awards? Oh, why? 
I am incredibly honored to be here tonight. Um, like being, just being in the company of all these great people here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of what I've achieved, but like looking at what people here are achieving and, and the winner of uh, this year's award, it's, it's remarkable, it's huge. And it's so nice that it's being recognized uh, at such a big platform. So yeah, I'm very excited to be here. We are excited to have you here. Now, Nansen, you are Norwegian. Nansen, Norwegian, he's a hero, right? Yes, <laughs> Norwegian hero. Yeah, it's really cool. Yes, it's wonderful that this then this award is in, is in his name and kind of fulfilling what he set out. So he was the man who helped refugees in the first place. Definitely. Now, I heard you performing on stage earlier when you were rehearsing. You are truly gifted. You're so talented. It's amazing. Thank you. We can't wait to see you perform. You're going to be closing the show. Now, you said it's important for young people, millennials, who often get a bad press, mm. but I think it's often misjudged i think millennials are great as all young people are um now to use their energy and creativity to improve the world what did you mean by that How sorry what did you say to use their energy and creativity to improve oh, the world you said it yeah. Agreed. <laughs> oh, I said it. um yeah i i think it's, it's the new generation mm. and there is so much messed stuff stuff that is happening around the world now and it's and we get so much information like we all were all grown up with phones and with the internet everything and there's so much information at us all the time and I guess it's 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 easy to to close your eyes but this is like such a it's such a critical moment to not close our eyes this is the time we need to open up and we are actually we're the ones that's going to take it further so it's, it's time for a change Definitely. I think your generation, that is really well said, by the way. Woo! Can we just get a high five? <laughs> yes! <laughs> get this woman on a stage. You are going to be on a stage later yep, on. soon. Um, I think you're absolutely right. And I think there is something about your generation that is so empowered because you're living in quite dark, cynical times. Yeah. It is. We don't need to comment on the dark, cynical times because we are <laughs> celebrating. Um, now, your voice is phenomenal. I would love, and you're dancing. Can I just say, your dance moves in the video. <laughs> I'm obsessed, well, I'm slightly obsessed with dancing. Um, oh, you are? Yes. Are you a dancer? I, I've been known to dance, agreed. Oh. I did a little program in the oh. UK called Strictly. Oh. Uh, I got in the semi-finals, um, and then I was cruelly robbed of my place in the final. But we, it's a sore point, we don't a lot need of history to here. <laughs> uh, but your dancing's amazing. Tell me about your dance skills. We'll talk about the singing in a minute. Uh, I've been dancing since primary school, but never, never any professional stuff. But I'm happy that I can put it into my music now. It just, I don't know, gives more energy. It feels more alive. Yeah, I totally agree. And before we, we say goodbye to you, because I know you've got to get ready to get on the stage, <laughs> please give me a blast. It would be such an honor to hear you sing. <laughs> just, uh, just give us a bit of Don't Kill My Vibe, because that's what you're performing later. Right. Well, I need to do some vocal warm-ups anyways. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get the vocal warm-ups. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Maybe... Um, um oh don't kill my vibe that's some of it <laughs> i felt it i didn't just hear yes. it i felt it the vibrations sigrid you're a joy you're a talent more power to you when are you coming when are, what's happening next in your life after this where are you off to touring touring and new music on the on the road but now this is the focus now i'm so happy and humble to be here it's incredible I, um, and i'm sure that so excited with the speech and the performances it's it's amazing so many talented people here i think it's really important to have someone representing a young generation here and someone as talented as you a ba another badass girl thank you sigrid <laughs> <There's> loads <laughs> have a great performance i can't wait to see you perform thank you so now we so we will be, uh, no, I'm going to show you um, another, we're going to give, so we often talk about, we see these amazing people, we're honouring Dr. Evan Attar, but people wonder what can we do, how can we help, how can we help in a small way? Well, here are eight ways that you can help refugees.
So that was um, eight ways, eight practical ways in which you can help because there are 68 and a half million refugees on the planet and we need people like you, wherever you are in the world, people like you to stand with refugees. So Namzamo, Namzamo and Batha, any of you heard of Namzamo and Batha? I think many of you will have. She is hosting um, live on stage and she's making her way to the studio to come and talk to me. Lots of you joining in from all over the world. Who have we got? We've got people from all over the world. Here we go. Kathy says, hello Nansen's watching from Nairobi. Hello to you, hello in Kenya. So inspired by Dr. Atta, what an incredible human being. So happy that he's getting the recognition he deserves. Absolutely. We've also got Esther who's live, who says, thanks for this live. She's having a great time watching this. Christo, hello, Christo, how are you? Christo says, Atta, congratulations for proving that hard work, compassion, and honesty are indeed the best policies. So as well as this Facebook Live, we have, got, we have been taking you live to the stage and the amazing host for the evening, my co-host, is Namzamo and Batha. Come on in, gorgeous girl. It's an invasion. Yes, <laughs> have a seat. Look at you. And look at you. You look amazing. How is it out there? It is incredible. The audience is in absolute awe. Everybody is just in the moment. I'm cracking jokes and people are laughing, which is really weird. Oh, really? No, that's usually good. not funny. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. You've brought the energy. And now tell me, uh, how do you find yourself uh, involved in the nonsense? When did you first get connected to UNHCR and the work of refugees? Oh, goodness. I think it started early last year. And for me, I mean, I've always been, I've always been a, a, an advocate for, 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 for the rights of others, especially those who are forcibly displaced. It's been an incredible journey of, of, of just self-enlightenment as well, but also knowing that one is advocating for those who are your displaced kin and knowing that you're making a difference. I think so. And it's so nice there, someone so young talking about this. <laughs> right, you did something really remarkable uh, in June of this year. You gave a TED Talk. I did. Yes. Tell us where this TED Talk was, because it wasn't just an ordinary TED Talk, was it? Tell us we about We definitely it. made history. You know, UNHCR has been groundbreaking and just pushing for that. And one thing that I absolutely was excited about is hearing that TED Talks have never gone to a refugee camp. And for the first time in history, they were going to Kenya at the Kakuma refugee camp. Hang Amazing. On. You have no idea. This, so they'd never been to Kenya? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Never been to a refugee camp for that matter. So it was really groundbreaking. You should have seen how everyone in the streets came out dressed in the nines because there was also like a fan park. So there was this huge screen. It was just really, really joyful. I'll never forget that day. I bet. And like you say, making history. Yeah. Now, had, was that your first time in a refugee camp? No, it wasn't my first time at a re refugee camp, but it was my first TED talk. <laughs> yes, your first ever TED talk. Yes, well, I can, no wrecking. No, no wrecking, but no doubt you smashed it. Because I can imagine that you're, well, we know you're an incredible speaker. We know you're a phenomenal actress and you're doing you. incredibly well. Congratulations on your nomination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should have won. Should have won. Yes, please. She was yes, robbed. Yes, I she agree. was robbed. I, okay. <laughs> I didn't say it. Now, you're a mega, 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 mega powerhouse on uh, social media, right? Millions and squillions and billions of followers. By the way, if anyone wants to follow me, I'm at it's, it's Anita Rani. I'd love a few of your followers. In fact, look, can we just show how meta this situation is? Come on in. This is it. Come on in. Come on in. Yes, come on you, in. You, you, yes, you go just. You come. What's that? We're on. We're come. live. Come, we're Put live on Facebook. Up. You had your phone. I just up. want to show you because she's. You're filming. <laughs> Crouch down so the camera can see you. This is what's going on in the background. There is someone filming this whole situation yes, yes. whilst we're talking. Right here. Um, so yes, can social media? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I she just, hates cameras. She yeah, she always wants to put me on camera. <laughs> you need to see the modern world. So yes. there's someone follow Nomsama, there's someone following you all the time, social media. Yes. <laughs> Can social media change the world? What is the power of social media? The power of social media, Anita, is the fact that it has taken the world from being this big to being this small. And if used right, it can really be used for good. I think if you spend time on that, I mean, for me, I spend time on social media for information. Either I'm giving information or I'm receiving information. And for me, you know, like the one thing that I absolutely love about it is how quick and how instant. I mean, look at us. I know, right? You know, in the past, you'd have to wait until what? <laughs> a yes. couple of hours or a couple of days for everybody to see the content. But, you know, today it's instant. Everybody's here with us. So they can connect with what we're talking about. 100%. Which is hashtag with refugees 
Gigi's. That's it. At it's Anita Rani. All Nums Armour's fans. There Come. we go. Listen, you are presenting a live show. I am. We're getting very comfortable I'm here. I'm already sweating. I need you to get back on that stage. I need stage. to run. I need to run. I need go to run. Go and do your hosting duties. <laughs> I'm going to catch up with later. I, I want you to get high five Ahmed on your way because he's coming in oh, as you're God. leaving. Yes. yes. So I can't, there we go, the gorgeous host of the show. Now there's all sorts going on. Now I am about to introduce you to someone who is utterly remarkable. His name is Ahmed Judah. Ahmed, come and join me. Hello. Just come and join us. This is how we work in Facebook. Hey. How are you? Come. Good. Look at you. Take a seat. <laughs> Take a seat. Um, how was your performance? Uh, amazing. I'm happy with it. I um, reached the point that I wanted to reach uh, while choreographing it uh, by being super natural and just send my message through dancing. Your story is absolutely remarkable. Um, so you were born stateless in a refugee camp. I think most of us on planet Earth can never even begin to imagine what that means, how that feels. Is it how? Tell us a bit about that experience. What does it? How does it feel to be stateless? Well, to be honest, um, before the war in Syria, I never felt stateless. Right. But uh, because I felt always home in Syria. Um, but uh, when the war starts, when people start to define each each other, and when I left Syria, I when I asked for refugee asylum in Holland, I was shocked with the nationality stateless. And then I asked, what does that mean? And then they told me that you are nothing. You are from nowhere. <laughs> and then that was very big shock for me because now nowadays, and when I asked, it was like last year, 2017. And uh, how can we define people as a stateless people? We are all um, human beings, mm -hmm. you know? I was born as a refugee. I didn't choose to be a refugee. That's yeah. different. And then your connection with dance. You were born to dance. I saw you perform on that stage. We're going to show another clip of you. In fact, can we show that clip right now? We will be showing. Yes? We're going to, we will show you, we were going to show, we're going to show you dancing. Um, but watching you perform, it was so emotional. I mean, I love dance. I think dance is one of the truest art forms. And when somebody performs like you do from the heart, you cannot help but feel emotion. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for having um, me. I think, I think the world and everyone watching on Facebook need to hear your connection with dance because you, you left your refugee camp, right? As yeah. a, you're a tiny, to sit to perform as a singer somewhere. Yes. <laughs> and you saw some young girls dancing. Yes. And what happened? I just start to move with them. When I heard the music, I wanted to play the music with my body, not with um, the instrument or with singing or whatever. I just felt something inside me moving uh, on the music and I carried this uh, feeling with me back home. And I started it secretly because I saw girls. So I thought it's only for girls. <laughs> so I kept it as a secret between me and my mother. <laughs> yeah, until I uh, went to the company uh, in Syria, the main company in Syria, and I became principal there after four years. And uh, yeah, I was lucky. I'm just lucky. You are, it's more than you. I think, well, I've, I love this phrase that someone said to me, luck favors the brave. Yes. And you are one of the, I think one of the, there are a lot, I think all people who are displaced and refugees are incredibly brave, but you are particularly brave because you Thank danced you. with defiance. Because yeah. people, you know, people told you, you, even your own father said you shouldn't yeah. dance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But um, like for me, dance is my freedom. It's the only way I could feel myself as an existent, existed human being, you know. I dance to exist. I dance to feel free. I dance to, uh, to be strong, and uh, for me dance is creation, and as Jonathan Larson uh, said, the opposite of war is not peace, it's mm -hmm. creation. Say that again, because I've, <laughs> I've heard you say this before, yes. um, and I think it's one of the most beautiful phrases, and I really want everybody watching on Facebook yeah. to really let this, say it again, say that beautiful phrase. It's a saying for Jonathan Larson, he said, uh, the opposite of war is not peace, it's creation. And for me, when I heard this, for me to, to be able to create a piece of art in the middle of war, it's a blessing. I will, I will never forget that. Like the moment I was dancing on the, on the theater in Belmira, it was magical. For me, I, 
I cannot describe in, in uh, words what I felt, but I, f I felt something that every artist should fight for his country to keep the culture and art alive. Agree. Because without culture and art, what are we fighting for? What are we? <laughs> what are we without culture and art? Now, you've just said a phrase there. I mean, I don't know how many people caught that, but you performed at Palmyra. Now, um, when Palmyra fell, this beautiful, I mean, it, it broke the hearts of people around the world. Yeah. We all felt the pain of that city yeah. collapsing. Your mother was born in that city. Yeah. It's, it's your, there's a piece of your heart there. Yeah, it's my childhood, it's my, it's my home. I like to be um, from a Syrian mother, especially from Belmira, it's such a pride for myself because um, I was born as a refugee and everybody calls me a refugee, but my mother is Syrian. Why I don't have the Syrian nationality? Why still in the Arab world ladies cannot give their sons or daughters a uh, nationality? Why? So I feel Syrian. Syria is my home. I am Syrian. I am from Belmira. If you want to give me the passport or not, it's your own problem. Mm -hmm. My I identity is dance. Right. I'm an artist. You were born to dance. I feel like we need to see some of your dancing. And once we let me know as soon as there are people working away pressing buttons <laughs> to make sure that everybody on um, Facebook can see uh, your performance. Um, you actually, you actually got to perform in Palmyra, didn't you? Yeah. How would you say maybe you were probably one of the last artists to perform there? Yeah. How does I'm that feel? The last one. What was that experience like? I've, I, I'm. I'm. It's a pity. It's a pity that I'm the last artist who could perform on that stage because that stage it has to stay there. But after I danced there in one month, uh, they pumped it. And for me, I was uh, in Holland, in Amsterdam there. And I was, I cannot describe my feeling again. I'm a dancer, I dance, yes. I don't talk. <laughs> No, 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 my goodness. For somebody who doesn't talk, you're expressing yourself incredibly well. Um, Thank you. How do you feel when you think about your country? When I think about my country, I feel hope because I want me and other uh, refugees, young refugees, mm -hmm. to learn as much as we can from Europe and have this experience to go back to our country and build it and live there because that's where we belong. And thanks to Europe for having us and provide us the safety and the education to, to let us grow with love and with value of living. You speak so eloquently. You know, someone who said, I don't talk, I dance. You can talk and dance. You, you talk as beautifully as you dance. You really do, Ahmed. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to go to the stage in a moment just because the award, um, the, thank, the award will be handed over. But you have a very special tattoo, don't yes. you? Yes. Come on, let's have a look. I want to have a good <laughs> okay. look. It's so hot in my studio. I'm so yeah, sorry. All right, how can we get, like, you'd have to crouch down because the cameras, we've got robo cams in here. Okay. Can we, if you turn around. And is that what is that in Hindi? Yes. Hindi Milika. Yeah. I'm Indian. I can't read Hindi wow. though. Sorry. I'm a part-time Indian. <laughs> Born in Britain for all the Indians watching who think Natia Yamaro. It says yes. in Indian. Natia yes. Yamaro. Dance yes. or die. Dance or die. Yeah. What a powerful statement. Why did you have that put there? I put it here because uh, there where they cut the heads. And uh, when I got threatened by those racist uh, groups. I don't like even to mention them. You don't have to, <laughs> but we can imagine um, that your life is uh, under, you're under incredible yeah, threat. Yeah, I wanted them when they catch me and cut my head, I want them to see this for the last time, and especially in Indian, because Indian, they still have God for dance. And I believe I belong, yes, belong to this. Absolutely. And if only my mother had put me into Kathak from a very young age, she did it herself. <laughs> I love to dance. I love to dance. And I, I didn't even have a tutu when I, I was a deprived child. Uh -huh. we, I would love to know, just before we go to the stage for the handover. Okay. Well, I did a program called Strictly. It's, I can't believe I'm bringing this up. It's, all, it's, not, it's not about me, but okay. I did a program. It's like Dancing with the Stars. And I was taught that I, I have, because I've never learned to dance. I've never learned to point my foot. Is there a technique you can give for everyone watching there's millions of people watching all over the world how do we point our foot is there a technique someone Darcy Bustle the prima ballerina told me you point from your your little toe is um, there a top tip you can give us anyone who's an aspiring ballet dancer you don't have to point your foot to dance just dance from your heart and be happy and you reach any heart so you don't have to point your foot 
I don't have to just quote dance me. happily believe me <laughs> it's an amazing sentiment thank you so much what message would you like to give to everybody watching we, you've got an opportunity here Ahmed you're a remarkable young man you are a refugee you have found you've found home and you found refuge in Holland which is incredible people will be tuning in and the hello everybody who's just joining us from all over the world why is it important that they stand with refugees because in um we are all refugees in this life. We are, we are all guests. And refugee, it means guests who need shelter, who need safety. And when we leave our country, anybody will leave his country, he will, became, be, he will become a kid who needs care, who needs help, who needs to learn the language, to need how to walk around. So just let's be nice to each other. And I would ask, you can help a refugee even by showing him how to take the tram. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank You're a wonderful, you. wonderful you man. Uh, to to take, just stay seated just for a moment, yeah. um, because we're now we're going to cross live to the stage where we can see the handover of the award. Yeah. Thank you, High Commissioner for the Refugees. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by lots of them. They're all around me. I'm now with Aya Mohammed, who is a student here in Geneva, and you are also a, a refugee from Iraq. Are you still a refugee, Aya, or are you now? I can say that I'm a refugee, and I can say that proudly. I mean, I didn't choose to become a refugee, but I became a positive refugee because I chose to. Tell me your story. Uh, so my name is Aya. I'm 23 years old. Originally, <laughs> I'm from Iraq. I lived just seven years in Iraq because of the war. I fled to Syria. I fled to Syria, Turkey, and now I'm in Switzerland. I resettled in Switzerland uh, one year ago, and I will be a refugee for more 15 years until I get the citizenship. Hopefully, incredible. Um, what does it mean for you to be here? Actually, it's it's very very good to not just come and cry on the situation that the refugee uh, like live through, but we are here to celebrate. Uh, the leaders, refugees are leaders. We are celeb celebrating these leaders. So, um, no, yeah, I think you are a leader. You're a brilliant advocate. I mean, what I love is, to, what I love to, to, for me, what brings me more joy than anything I in life is to meet empowered young women like yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and you are such a great speaker. And it's no surprise that you are sitting here with me today. And the reason you are here is because of Brandon Stanton. Now, Brandon Stanton, for people who don't know, has a, an Instagram account called Humans of New York. And it just shows you the power of social media, the power of Facebook, the power of Instagram. He took a photograph of you, right? Yeah, Tell that's us what correct. happened. Uh, I met Brandon Staten um, a few years ago and, and he shared my story um, uh, through Facebook and it got over than one million uh, si a signature to let me in uh, the United States, but I end in Geneva. So uh, as you said, the media is, is really power uh, and uh, to, to focus on these cases of refugees and to show that they are belong to this world and we need to focus on them as, as, as much as we can. Yeah, but it was you, it was you that made, that kind of really drew his attention. And basically from that, you found yourself at Davos, didn't you? Yeah, I, I was honored to, um, to be um, a guest with the 
Kate Blanchett. Uh, she she was amazing, and she and we need more people like uh, Kate actually uh, to put focus, to put emphasis on on the positive um, side of of being refugee, and and how can we support and how can we build that empathy? Uh, now she interviewed you about the power of storytelling. What is the power of storytelling? What does you mean by that? Uh, actually, the, the, the power of storytelling, like when people hear about refugees, I mean, or see something from the media, it's, it's completely different when the refugee, him or herself, will be there and speak about their experience. So storytelling is really playing a big part of changing people's mind about what a refugee does mean. I think that's exactly right, which is why you are here, which is why we've got you, this wonderful young woman, to talk about seven years in Iraq, then you went to Syria, and from Syria you then, the war stuff began, and again you were made... To Turkey. Then you went to Turkey. And then I was a refugee, but working for refugees when I was an age of 17, so I'm proud of that. I'm proud of you. Thank we you are so all, much. Everyone watching on Facebook, is get in touch, drop me a note right now to tell me how proud we are of Aya. <laughs> Thank what you. What happens to your education through um, all that process? Actually, my education, I mean, you can understand of being like in, in different uh, education system uh, through different countries. So it was really hard for me, but I didn't surrender. I told myself that I need to be educated woman to help my community. And, and I hope that I will continue doing that. You, you are going to rule the world, Aya. I have no doubt about that. Very quickly, because we've got so much more to get through. Um, your dog is also now with you, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he was resettled as well. And I, and I was so happy, you know, because he's a part of the family. And I mean, he's a refugee dog, so um, I, I'm, I'm proud. And I, I'm really happy that I have him with me here. Your refugee dog is now with you feeling at home and your family is with you yes yeah i uh, thank god i mean yeah i mean that that that's uh, i feel that i'm blessed because of that i think this is a really important issue and it's something that all of you can really get away so lots there's another petition if you're in the uk about how families should be allowed to stay together there's a lot of good work happening aya you're a remarkable young woman thank, thank you, you so thank much you for coming so much. in to talk to me you look beautiful thank you now i did speak to the incredible Ahmed judah just a moment ago who is a dancer he has uh, that incredible tattoo, Dance or Die. He's a ballet dancer and we talk to him and he talks so eloquently and so beautifully, but it's really imperative that you see his performance from tonight. So here it is, have a look.
Hello. Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Nansen Awards. That was the amazing Ahmed Judo. Now, for those of you who just started to watch with us, welcome. You are live in Geneva with me, Anita Rani. This are the Nansen Awards. The Nansen Awards, the Nansen Award is given to one person who is doing remarkable work with displaced people on the planet. This year, it's been given to a surgeon, Dr. Evan Attar from South Sudan. What you just saw there was a performance by Ahmed Judah, who is a dancer and choreographer from Syria. He was born in a refugee camp, um, and during the civil war, he encountered not only li life-threatening situations, but also uh, death threats, simply because he was a dancer. It doesn't matter, because nothing stopped him dancing. He danced and danced and danced. Not only that, he started to teach dance to orphan children in Syria, uh, the children who were also stateless refugees, children for free. Every part of his body needs to dance. This story is incredible, isn't it? And when you see his performance, those of you will have seen me interview him earlier, uh, he's probably one of the last people to have performed in Palmyra. Now that is just one of the people I've spoken to tonight. We also spoke to Kate Blanchett earlier who made the keynote speech here. Um, Anushka Shankar performed. It has been the most remarkable evening. We've got lots of comments coming in from all of you. Let's see where people are tuning in from or switching on from. What is the terminology for Facebook actually? Is it tuning in, switching on people from watching? As somebody who works in television, I should probably know that, shouldn't I? I probably should. Um, people watching from Germany, Jordan, Ghana, Kenya, Sri Lanka, Canada, Argentina. Could we have possibly hit every single continent on earth? I think we have. Um, someone, Emma, has just said, hello, Emma, nice to hear from you. I love Kate and Sigrid. I'm glad you do, we love them too. Ravi, hello Ravi, how are you? Nice to hear from you. Ravi says, very humbling experience listening to Ahmed Judah. Absolutely, he says, very eloquent speaker, you inspire people. Indeed he does. We've heard some, from some very inspirational people this evening. Um, Mir Mirjana says, Aya, what an incredible human being. Keep up the good work. Uh, Ravi is, again says, such grace and grit in Aya. That smile shows the spirit and leadership of not being defeated. Keep your comments coming through. Now, thank you all for watching tonight. Uh, thank you all for your comments. Lots of you, that um, you can see them coming up right there across my screen. There you can see, oh, there you go. Muna, such an amazing young woman and the whole world is proud of you. This is what I'm talking about, everybody. This is what we need in life right now. I'd, wherever you are on planet Earth, I don't know what your situations are in your country. I don't know what your personal situation is. I don't know what the politics of your country is or how you feel about it. It doesn't matter because tonight is about celebrating humanity. Tonight is about compassion. Tonight is about the thing that unites us. So much of life is about division. I am in a place in Geneva, in Switzerland, with incredible women from all over the world, people from all over the world, celebrating what it means to be a human. And we want to hear from you. Do you agree with me? Have you, what do you think about some of the speakers you've heard from tonight? What did you think about Kate Blanchett's keynote speak? How did some of the performances make you feel? We've heard from all these creative people and all of them are saying the same thing essentially, which is there is such unity in art and what they're doing. And without art, we're not human. Do you agree with that? I think I do. I wish I could dance. I wish I could sing. I wish I could perform, play the sitar like Anushka Shankar. When you saw them perform on that stage, did it not make you feel something? It made me feel alive. It kind of connected to the vibrations in my body. Keep your thoughts coming through because we are live on Facebook at the Nansen Awards. It gives me great pleasure now to introduce our final performance for the evening. She's a remarkable young woman. She's flown over all the way from Norway. She was in here speaking to me earlier. We heard her vocal preparations. Of course you know who I'm talking about. She's only 22. She was born in 1996, for goodness sake. And she's one of the most talented women on earth right now with a beautiful song. Here is a rendition of Don't Kill My Vibe. This is Sigrid. You shut me down, you like the control. You speak to me like I'm a child Try to hold it down, I know the answer I can shake it off and you will feel threatened by me I try to play nice but oh, oh Don't kill my vibe oh, So important to me, don't you? But I want you to know that I don't belong here. Think you're so important to me, don't you? Don't kill my vibe. You love to tear me down, then pick me apart. 
I throw myself from heights that used to scare me Cause you're surprised I'm the puzzle you can't figure out I try to play and I spit Only 22 years old and that performance wasn't that so beautiful. I was getting very emotional through that. There's been a lot of emotion tonight. I want to say thank you to every single one of you who has joined us live to watch the incredible evening here at the Nansen Awards in Geneva. Keep it going, guys. This is social media in action. This is what it's all about. I want you to tell all your mates. I want you to spread the word about what you've seen tonight. You can follow us on Insta, at Refugees. You can follow me as well. It's Anita Rani. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Insta, share what you've seen tonight. It's going to be there for a while. Get everybody to get involved. Follow uh, what Refugees are doing. It's at Refugees. Tonight has been put on by UNHCR. They're doing incredible work. Let me remind you, 68 and a half million displaced people on earth right now wherever you are in the comfort of your own home watching on your laptop with your families just give them a hug tonight just think about the home that you're in and think about the possibility of not having that 68 and a half million people are living like that right now without a home thank you so much for those of you who've been getting in touch with us lots of you have been getting in touch maboob says great performances we're big supporters of unhcr keep it up Thank you to the team. Munna says, such an amazing young woman and the whole world's proud of you. Yes, you're talking about Aya, I totally agree. Tamara, who's joining virtually from uh, Tbilisi in Georgia. My goodness, Tamara, lovely to see you. Georgian food, amazing. And much love and appreciation to Dr. Atta, South Sudan and the country I worked in and love. And again, someone here says, we're big supporters of UNHCR, keep up the good work. Indeed, UNHCR, keep up the good work. And all the team, I wanna thank personally all the team that have put this show on. They've been working very, very hard to make sure that we're able to broadcast this Facebook Live to all of you. So thank you to everybody who joined us. Messages thanking me too. My goodness me, messages are coming in. It's been absolutely my pleasure. It's been my honor. Remember, this is about compassion. This is about humanity. We all, put your hand there, every single one of you. Come on, all of you, right? Can you feel it? Is it beating? Yep, so we've got a heart, right? That is what makes us human, and that's what connects us, and that's what tonight has been about. It's been my honour to be your host. Until the next time, remember, hashtag follow at refugees, spread the word, spread the love. Goodbye, wherever you are. See you soon. <laughs>